Tonight, another one. The Obama administration hitting a new Obamacare delay. This time, HHS is having trouble finalizing contracts with insurance companies, so it will not meet its intended September 5th to 9th deadline. Now it's being pushed back to about mid-September. But how bad is this delay? And will it throw off Obamacare's October 1st launch date? Senator John Barrasso joins us. Good evening, sir. Great to be with you. Thanks oh, for having me. So we've had a lot of delays. Some are more significant than others. Uh, where does this one rate? I think this is pretty significant because it... Uh, this is between the insurance companies and the, and the government. They have to sign these contracts before they can even get ready to go in uh, for the exchanges. That's all set for October 1st. You know, this just shows that this health care law, which is not just unpopular and not just unaffordable, it's also unworkable. You know, as a doctor, I want to make sure we have people in this country getting care that is affordable and they have access to that care uh, and, and this health care law is heading in the wrong direction. All right. Well, let me tell you why I'm a little suspicious of this one. At first blush, I thought, what's the big deal? So they push it off a week. What's the big deal? But um, in inquiring why it was pushed off, you know, that old transparency mm -hmm. stuff? Well, we can't get an answer. I, I, at least I couldn't find an answer. And then at one place I read something that might be technical problems. And then it occurred to me, like, why don't they just say it's technical problems? Because we all understand technical problems. But then you know, I thought that I put on my, my I thought of myself as a, as a lawyer for a second. I thought, you know what? The reason they don't have these signed contracts is because I suspect they don't have a deal. You know, I suspect, and, that, and they don't want us to know that there's really no deal. But they won't tell us, so it's just you know, sp wild speculation. And this is for the 34 states that the government in Washington is supposed to be in charge of that, but even the states of California and Oregon, they're concerned about having delays. The, the White House truly, they're, they're frantic, they're panicked, they're trying to put this together with chicken wire and duct tape just to make it fly on October 1st, uh, but this health care law is not good for patients, it's not good for the doctors and nurses who what, take care of them, it's terrible for taxpayers. What if, what if October 1 rolls around and they're all ready to go and that, uh, you know, all the sort of the critics have egg on their face in terms of, I mean, people may not like Obamacare, but at least, the, I mean, the two questions, whether you like Obamacare and the second is whether it's actually going to work. But suppose October 1 rolls around and those exchanges work beautifully. Well, if they work, people are going to see that they're going to have sticker shock because people are going to be paying a lot more uh, for health care than they would have with, without this health care law. You know, the actuaries who looked at this say for people under the age of 30, four out of five of them are going to be paying a lot more than they would be paying now. Well, and that's even with the but, subsidies. I don't know what if you, I mean, I shouldn't suggest that people cheat, but if you're, you know, you talk about the people under 30, why in the world do they buy them, buy the health care? Because the whole, we, we want them to buy it, so they pay into the pot, so they lower the cost for the older who might be sicker or the more sicker person. But if you're under, uh, it's like you, you, the, the cost of uh, the penalty is less than probably what you pay for the insurance. A lot if, less. A lot less. And if you get sick and you're under 30, they you can always, you they st you, at that point, you can buy it. So why in the world would anyone under 30 buy it? Th there's no reason to. And then they, the ruling came out also about the, uh, the penalties, as, as you talked about. Uh, the IRS isn't going to have the authority to actually go after you for the money. They've come out and said now all they can do is withhold uh, from you, uh, confiscate what would be your tax rebate. So I think they're not going to have much of an opportunity to go even go after that. So there are no incentives for young people to go into these exchanges or to buy insurance except the fact that it's the law and the law goes into effect uh, January 1st. The one thing that seems to be sticking is the most unpopular part, which is the mandate that every individual has to buy not just insurance, but government approved insurance. Well, I, I'll tell you what's not too popular is uh, that uh, you guys on Capitol Hill and your staffs, uh, you're going to get a big federal subsidy up to about 75 percent that the president signed right before you all went on vacation, on recess. And, and we have legislation. Yeah, the president pushed that through with Harry Reid. Uh, the Republicans have legislation to get rid of that whole thing. But it's interesting. I, I, the health care law is whatever the president happens to say it is that day. And the only people that seem to support the health care law are people that don't want it to apply to them. I mean, that's what we're seeing out there now, Greta. That's, that's stunning. I, I must admit and, that part of it is, is particularly stunning. Senator, always nice well, to see you. The other part that's interesting is that Bill Clinton is now going to have to explain to the American people come September what the health care law is about. He's being put into pitch hit because folks have stopped listening to President Obama. He has lost credibility. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Thanks for having me.